In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an e-cover. Now, an e-cover is a graphic which gives a physical dimension to any digital product that you might be selling online. To create e-covers, I use Adobe Photoshop CS2, which is an older version of Photoshop. But if you have a more recent version, then what I'm going to show you here will work just as well. I'm also going to use the One Click Covers plugin for Photoshop, which you can download from this website here. And once you've installed the One Click Covers, they'll appear here in the Actions tab in Photoshop. And what these are are basically um, a pre programmed set of instructions that Photoshop will follow. So it automates certain tasks so you don't have to do them yourself manually over and over again. Okay, to begin, what we're going to do here is use ebook 2 for this example. So, the first thing to do is select the start line here and then press on the play button, which you'll find down at the bottom here. So, press on play. And you see this opens up the basic e cover shape. All we have to do now is add in our graphics and so on. So, what I'm going to do is just pause the video while I do that. OK, I've put in some simple graphics here, and I've also saved it as a Photoshop PSD file. You see here I've called it fantasticcover.psd. And I always save my e-covers as a PSD file when they're at this stage, when they're in this flat stage. And the reason that I do this is because later on when they've been put into the uh, e-book format, uh, which you'll see a bit later. If there's anything that I don't like about it, or I need to go back and make any changes, then it's much easier to do it at this stage. Uh, so this is why I always save it as a PSD file at this stage. Okay, the next thing to do is come down here to Compile and click on Play. And you see Photoshop does all the work in the background to turn it into an e-cover like this. And then finally what I need to do is come here to Finish and again click on Play. And that trims it down to the correct size. Now I need to save it so that I can incorporate it into my web page. And for this I'm going to use the Save for Web function. So come here to File, Save for Web and this enables you to save it in all sorts of different formats. You can save it as a JPEG or a PNG file and some others as well and there are also some presets that you'll find here and also if I move this up a little bit if I click on this icon at the bottom here I can preview it in my default web browser so I'll see what it looks like when it's actually on my website and there we go, that doesn't look too bad, so I'll now go ahead and shut this window and save it to my hard drive.